family welcome back to I love me 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 so today I have 10 tips on how to maintain the balance in your relationship so stay tuned okay family and welcome back so the question of the day is how do I maintain balance in my relationship so again I have 10 tips for you so let's go ahead and jump on in all right, family, so the very first tip is to make sure that you are scheduling the time with your family, friends, and your career. Now, what I mean by career is if you are in the stages of building your career, but you want to keep your relationship intact, then set aside some time. I know that this is not the most romantic thing to do, but you will be building your career, but you'll also be making sure that you are continuously building your relationship as well. Um, I actually have an issue with this, and why I'm bringing this up is because I hear a lot of people like um, go hard in your uh, go hard on working on your career, work on your career, work on your career, and then a lot of times we have a tendency to not balance that out, and we have a tendency to leave our families behind, and we end up starting new families, whatever it may be. I actually have a problem with that because I feel that if I am building up my career, I want it to be with the person that's been by my side, that sacrificed all all of the time, energy, and everything else that I was sacrificing with. I really don't want to have to go and worry about somebody getting with me just because of my newfound money or whatever it is. So balance out everything. Schedule as much as you can. That really shows you that you will be accomplishing more things. And that's really throughout this entire 10 things. Schedule as much as possible. That way you will feel like you are accomplishing much more. So tip number two is to make sure that you schedule time to recharge and reset for yourself because you cannot continuously help everybody out there and you are not helping yourself. So you have to schedule or set time to say, you know what, I'm actually going to go because massage is my thing, which is why I always use this as an example. I am going to go and get a massage this weekend because I need some time for me. I need some me time. That is my relax. Uh, that is my relaxation time. So I can gather my thoughts, come back and be recentered and ready to work with my daughter, ready to work with my fiance, ready to work with my friends, ready to work with my family. I'm ready to give again. And I can't do that if I'm not recharged and reset myself. The third thing that you can do, again, is another scheduling thing, which is to make sure that you are making the time, if you can, for um, like play dates for the children. Well, make it time for your children, period. And then for like they play dates or school plays and school recitals and all of this stuff. And then you have the sports that you're going to put them into, depending on age, obviously, and if they're even still in school, etc. But make time for your children and then make time for the play dates school activities, etc. Again, schedule as much as possible. That way you know exactly where you're going to be and you will see that you can still get a lot done. I'm not saying that you're not going to be tired, <laughs> but you will still be able to get a lot more done and the stress levels will be kind of decrease in the sense that you don't have to worry about, okay, am I spending enough time with the kids? Am I spending enough time with the husband or the boyfriend or the boo or girlfriend, depending on which one of y'all watching this, right? So it just depends. Balance as much as possible by scheduling. The fourth one can be a little bit controversial. What I mean by that is you do not want to say no to your family and friends if you are waiting on your partner to make plans with you. So say for instance, you really want to go to, let's say a concert. Your friend invited you to go to a concert and it's not a couple's thing. Your friend just wants you to go. And you're like, you know what? I need to run it by my partner, whatever. And I get that. It's a respect thing. I'm not saying to not run it by your partner. But what I am saying is if, if it is something that you really are craving to do and it's not affecting anything else, then that can be your scheduled me time. I mean, away from the family, away from kind of taking it all in and thinking about everything. This is kind of mindless time for yourself. This could be a way for you to reset and recharge yourself. But depending on whatever the activity is, do not only say no if you're waiting for your partner to get back to you. Are you guys going to do something? Did they make plans? This could be in a boyfriend, girlfriend stage. This could be at any stage. But something that you really want to do and you're only saying no because... You don't know what your partner wants to do with you. I think that you should go ahead, schedule it, because it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying do anything illegal or something that's going to um, mess up your reputation with your spouse. No. But if it's something that you really want to do, 
an activity that you really want to participate in, whether it's a girl's night, whether it's a guy's night, whatever it is, go and then tell your partner, you know what, this day, this time, I'm going to be with the boys, I'm going to be with the girls, I'm going to be whatever. It's okay. This is how you maintain balance in all your relationships, but especially your romantic relationship. Schedule as much as possible. I cannot say that enough. Now, all of these tips actually go into number five, which is to communicate all of these things with your partner. You want to try to minimize any thoughts that your partner will have that you're outside outside doing anything that is not representation, a healthy representation of your relationship or infidelity, whatever it is. But communicate what you need to your partner. Like, I need some time to myself. I need to be at the concert. I need to go to the kids' recital. I need to, whatever it is that your need is, communicate that to your partner. I don't see why your partner would have a deal or a make a big deal out of you wanting and needing to do these particular things, okay? The sixth thing is to be considerate. Be considerate of your partner. Be considerate of y'all time together. Again, I say schedule everything. Of course, schedule the time with your partner. I didn't put that one in here, but of course, it's a no-brainer to me, which is why I didn't put it in here. This is why you are scheduling everything so your romantic relationship can continuously thrive. Now, if you just as a side note, I have a video specifically on how to make my relationship thrive. I will put that video up here, of course, up here at some point, and then down in the description box below because that one is also important to make your relationship thrive. So I'm not going to... Um, uh, I'm not going to concentrate on that one here, but be considerate and communicate these things with your partner so they will understand exactly what's going on with you and there are no like well, I wonder where this came from, or how come she didn't say anything? How come he didn't say anything? You will know exactly what each other needs. Number seven on how to keep a balance in your relationship is just to make sure that you are putting as much trust in your partner, putting as much trust in your relationship, putting as much trust in yourself about the decisions and choices that you make. If you make them, you stick to them. Even if you are wrong, you can always say, you know, I'm sorry, but this is what was occurring during this time. We are all human and a lot of us put all of these pressures on ourselves to be perfect in every way and it's just not possible that is unnecessary stress that you are adding on you and of course on your partner as well so be trusting be considerate communicate with your partner okay give me a second number eight you have to actually understand that it is a give and take in any relationship it is not all taking it is not all giving and unfortunately you have to understand as well that just because you are giving your partner could be in the mode of take 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 it doesn't mean that they are a selfish person all the time they're not necessarily meaning to be selfish to be the taker all the time but this is what they need right now for themselves so you continuously give but know that sometimes you are going to be the you are going to be the taker take 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 and your partner is going to be the giver 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 but it is a balance when both are taken sometime and both is giving sometime so just realize that it's a give and take and a lot of time it's not balanced during the time of taking during the time of giving the ninth thing, actually some couples have a big issue with this and it is to make sure that you communicate but make sure that you are informing your partner about big purchases like cars and houses and jets and you know plane tickets, destinations, whatever it is. Big purchases need to be agreed upon between both people. Now it obviously depends upon your particular relationship, however the majority of relationships this is a way to keep the balance. This is a way to keep all of the unnecessary drama and arguments out of your relationship by just communicating, hey, I know you, your partner might not even like it, but at least give me the opportunity to know, right? <laughs> a lot of people go out and just make impulsive um, big ticket item purchases. Like, you know what? I'm, I actually want a motorcycle, so I'm going to get a motorcycle. Like, that's not just some cheap throwaway cash. For most people, it's not. The last and final tip is a big one, so come here and listen up. Come here, sis. Come here, bruh. Come on. Come on in. Bring it on in. Take more time for giving your partner and for giving yourself. Say, for instance, you were the one who messed up. You were the one who came at your partner wrong. Your delivery was all toe up from the flow up. It's okay to say I'm sorry. 
But it is absolutely a must for you to forgive yourself for the wrongdoing. But also when your partner does the wrongdoing to you, that you are the forgiver as well. Now, of course, I uh, understand that there are degrees to this, right? So you can't go out there being whatever it is that's on your deal breaker list that your partner is doing to you. And then you know, I'm saying just forgive, forgive. But you still have to forgive because you are forgiving for yourself. You are actually not forgiving for your partner. Just understand that you are forgiving for yourself because you do not want to start letting all of this stuff creep inside of you and then you start having anxiety or stress or worry or even anger pain resentment and like you know what i'm gonna I'm get you i'm gonna get i got you next time you don't want to do all of that so forgive as much as possible doesn't matter the situation i'm not saying that you are necessarily going to stay with your partner depending on what the topic is that you that they that they need to be forgiven for however you still need to forgive them for said thing that they did against you because that is only harming you in the long run all right family i'm hoping that these 10 tips have come in handy for you what are some things that you do in your own relationship to maintain the balance i certainly want to know of course some of the other people reading these comments definitely want to know do not forget about my online courses there are three of them they are down in the description box below um, i have a one for a single just in case this is your very first time here let me just simply explain them to you I have one for my super single people and that just basically means that you are kind of over the dating scene. However, you have not given up totally and so what's happening with you is that you are trying to understand exactly what you want, need, and desire and also to help build up your confidence. The super single course is absolutely going to help you with that. If you are in the dating stages, then I have a course exactly for you that is going to help you navigate through the dating stages to understand what are some of the things that you should be doing in the dating stages? Some of the things that you should be looking for in the dating stages. Some of the things that you should absolutely make sure that you apply within the dating stages as well. And then finally, I have one for my married and long-term couples. Uh, you just need a boost within your relationship. You need some a little bit more guidance within your relationship. And this is definitely going to help you out with that. You're going to receive so much information in there. There's definitely some homework to do. So it's not just listening to me speak or reading the text. There is some homework to do because that is the best way for you to understand if you've actually attained and retained the information. All right. So definitely go ahead and check out my online courses. And then finally, do not forget that I have a playlist for the month of March. All right. I also have a playlist for the month of December. I actually have several playlists, but specifically, if you have missed any of the questions for the month of March, then you absolutely can check out that playlist. I will see you again tomorrow.